thing. Uh, another thing would be search, the login link, the register link. Uh, that center section right, where's my, there we go, right there, the home, that's breadcrumb uh, user control. So there's user controls all over the place. The menu, the date, all right? Those are all user controls. All this stuff down here. Some of those user controls have settings. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. But you, you, they have. They'll. I stated that incorrectly. They have settings, but you can't like go into like what you can with model settings or page settings or something like that. You can't go modify them. Once you set the settings, uh, they're done. Unless you need, if you do need to change them, you have to uh, basically upload or change the skin. Okay. Um, there's two different ways to do that. Um, if you're a more savvy person, you can just go change the user control. All right. So basically, the cool thing about uh, tokens. All right. Is when you talk into your graphic designers, or if you're somebody that doesn't, that's not really a, a, a programmer, but you come from the design side, you use that token and put it in your HTML where that user control would be. All right. If you're a programmer, you can't use the token. You need to go and uh, find the user control reference and register it up at the top of your page, and then put the uh, actual markup into place. All right. So even if you even so. One thing that you might want to consider when you're making a choice between user controls and HTML is if you know where all that where all those references are, and uh, if not, if you know where to look for them. All right. Otherwise, just use tokens. Okay. So here's an example one. Somebody said logo. Great guess. There you go. <laughs> so there's a difference. If you're an HTML designer, you're going to see that bracket logo. All right. If you're using uh, the user control method, you're going to have to do all that. Right. Only difference. So basically, when uh, the uh, skin gets uploaded, when .NET Nuke uh, parses your skin files, it's going to take that bracket keyword, and it's going to use a regex expression to do two things. One is it's going to replace that keyword with the, uh, the DNN tag there, DNN co uh, colon logo. And the other thing is going to uh, register the uh, control on the top of the page there. All right. All right, so file structure is the next thing. Um, Basically, one thing I'm going to tell you real quick is uh, I put XHTML in like that little parentheses thing. I would highly suggest using XHTML uh, standard practices when you're you're creating your HTML. Uh, you're going to have a lot less bug issues in your design. If you're just going willy nilly, just doing codes and attributes and stuff, and not paying attention to what certain browser versions will support or certain versions of HTML will support, uh, you'll run into some bugs that will sometimes if you weren't familiar with those coding standards, uh, it would take you hours to try to figure out why some width isn't right or why some alignment isn't right or something like that. All right, so I always suggest doing your XHTML standard. Um, so you have XHTML files, you got CSS files, uh, self-explanation for CSS. In some cases, uh, you'll have an XML file, and that's where you will change the settings for your particular skin objects. All right, and I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. All right, so here's your file structure. All right, so I'm going to have to plug into this one. Uh, as you can see up here, we got, I got two sides. We've got left and right. Uh, the file structure on the left here, this is your skins.zip. You see that? The skins.zip, that zip file actually has to be named skins.zip. That's very important. All right. Inside there, you have a whole bunch of things. You're going to have different skin files. Uh, in my case, I'm using an example of using HTML files. So I got admin.htm, which is a particular type of skin, portal.htm skin, skin.css. That's important too. That's what that needs to be named. The reason that needs to be named that is when your skin is on the site, and .NET Nuke says, "Okay, I'm using, uh, you know, I'm using this skin because they told me to." When it goes and uses that, it's going to go in the skin directory and look for skin.css to import your, your CSS file for you when it loads up your uh, your uh, skin, right? When the page loads. Um, so, and then if you have images, I suggest putting them in their own images folder or whatever you want to call it. And then any <coughs> screenshots you might have, and I'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, maybe in a dummy page, I'll show you that briefly as well. It's very similar to the container side. You can see there's containers.zip. Right? Containers.zip needs to be that name. And so we got the same pattern here again. The container name.htm, uh, plain.htm. So those are all different types of containers. And then we got the container.css. So instead of skin.css, container.css. So it is possible for one of your containers to be on a page and your skin not to be. Yes, sir. I can't read it from here, but do you have a license.txt in that skin side? No. Would you or could you? Uh, I don't think you can in this version yet, can you? Well, I mean, you can have a file, but it's not going to render. Right. Yeah, yeah that's going to. He's, he's referring to something that's going to be coming in the next version of .NET Nuke. 
you're going to be able to have a licensing model and everything into it, which is super cool. It's really neat. Um, but um, uh, so you have a very similar scheme there, and then the container.xml. All right. Now something else that's in there. Well, I'll go into that. It's a little bit more advanced for this slide. We'll get to that. Uh, so you can see we have a skins.zip and containers.zip. Now it, it is possible if you just want to have a package full of containers to just have that. But if we're talking about a skin package, we're going to zip up those two folders and put them into your name.zip. So that's going to be the actual name of your skin package. So your package contains your containers and your skins. All right? But you can have them separate and you market them separate or, or deal with them separate if you want to. But it, usually you have a whole theme so they're all together as one big package. Now, uh, one thing I, I, I was supposed to have giveaways today. I was going to have a whole bunch of O-Duck swag. So there is something wrong in the slide. I was just curious if anybody caught it. Container name. That's right. Container name does it. That's supposed to say skin name does it. So wherever your name in the skin. Now, one thing that's important to note here is you want to keep your container uh, or your uh, well, your skin package name short. All right. Uh, it's not as important right now because the next version of .NET News they're going to fix this. But the reason the reason being is when your container or your skin package name shows up in these drop down menus, you're going to see in a minute. Um, if your name's not short, it's going to take up all the room on the drop down list when the drop down lists are shown to the end user to be able to choose a skin to select from. All right. So you want to keep it kind of short so that way they can actually see the skin or container name after your package name. All right. You'll see that in a moment. So if I had my Oduck stuff, uh, you would have won something. Um, <laughs> all right, panes. So uh, pane uh, uh, basically is a section on your particular skin where you can drop a module onto. All right. So uh, basically, when you go and you have you know x number of modules, you go to pick text module. One of the things you have to choose is where on that page do you want it to go, and that's where that's where the panes come into play. So when the page loads and it starts. Uh, the default that ASPX starts grabbing all the things it needs, it grabs the skin, it grabs the container, and all these things. It, it, that's one of the ways it knows where to put something. So, for in this case, it's the modules. Um, so, uh, when we look at the code, uh, you'll, I'll show you where a pane can be made to class by using the visible equals false. Um, now, where that comes into play, and you're about to see a slide where I show you layout. Actually, I think it's the next one. Here we go. So, here's an example of panes. All right. So, you got your header area, which is not a pane. Your fruit area, which is not a pane, but all the rest of them are panes. This is the most common layout for a website, all right? For a skin, I should say. All right. So if we're talking about collapsing, if we're talking about collapsing a pane, say for instance we have content over here, like maybe links to navigate to areas, and then content here. This is your main stuff. We don't have anything over here. We might want that to go away. So keeping all that white space there, there's a way to do that in .NET New. All right. And in order to do that. You put that visible equals false in there. So you can see the examples of uh, panes in here. These are HTML examples, obviously. So uh, basically, we have the ID number of the uh, pane, or ID name, I should say, sorry. Uh, so in this case, it's a content pane. Content pane is required. Does anybody know what? No? Content pane. Well, content pane lets you know that things go into this, it's going to contain information. If you just have pain, then it doesn't know what kind of pain is. That's not necessarily true. You can name your content pains anything you want, but one thing that is required when you're just talking about your skins is you have to have a content pain on your page. All right. The reason being is if you have something on your page that got transferred there from another page, um, you know, like a module just got restored or something like that, and it was in you know buck tooth pain, all right, and you don't have a buck tooth pain on your on your skin. It doesn't know where to put it, so it's going to automatically look for the content pane. If there's no content pane, you get an error. All right, you have to have it there. Another area is if you go into your site, and those of you that have messed with .NET Nuke, you go to do something like maybe you go edit text, or you go to module settings, or something like that, or page settings. All right, it's looking automatically for the content pane in order to put those settings into. All right, so that one's more relevant than the other example, but both of those are true. Right, so you have to have a content pane. Now the rest of them, I've seen skins, and I don't recommend this. I've seen skins where like maybe a pane's called navigation. That's it. I would suggest always putting the word pane after the name of your pane. All right, and name them appropriately. If you have a pane on the left side, it's probably good to call it left pane. You have pane on the right side, right pane, top pane, bottom pane, all those things. Um, now one reason is to it's, it gives you some standardization for yourself, but it also gives you standardization because the majority of the panes that you will see out there, that's what they do. So if you change your skin, you know maybe you're not uh, maybe you're not a designer, and you go and buy another skin, you plop it on your site, you go and change the skin for your page, 
everything will be, still be in the same spot. 